We want to make our declaration. Hallelujah. As we declare in honor of the word of God. Lift up your Bible. Say, Lord, O oh Lord, in accordance with your word, in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, I will attend to your words. I will incline my ear to your word. Your word will not depart from my eyes. I will keep your word within my heart. Declare it, your word is life to me. Your word is health to my flesh. In accordance with your word, in Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 5, I will look carefully into your word. I will listen closely to your word. I will pay attention to every word you will speak to me today. I declare that I have been called out of darkness. I have come into your marvelous light. I have been called out of darkness. I have come into your marvelous light. Now declare it, I am no longer a slave. I am a son of God. God has made me an heir. All that God has belongs to me. Say it again. All that God has belongs to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seats. God bless you. Eternal Father in the heavens, we thank you for this morning. We give you the praise, glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, it is our prayer that you shine light upon your word in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God be open to us today in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Every covering upon the word of God, every veil upon the word of God that makes people blind to the things that God is saying. Lord, we take it away from our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word will come alive to us today in the name of Jesus. And our lives will never remain the same again. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Come on, and the people said, and the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Just look to your left and your right and welcome your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm happy to see you today. I'm happy to be sitting beside you. You look handsome. You look beautiful. It is so good to see you this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, this month, as we've announced, is what? A month of Marriage and family life. This is our marriage and family life month. And it is not just for us to come and dance. It is for us to learn the principles of the word of God as it relates to marriage. As believers, what God expects from us in our homes, in our marriages, is different from how other people live. Believers are a different people. We are a special people. We are a chosen generation. And because of that, God expects us to behave in certain ways in different uh, situations and different circumstances of our lives. And one of those areas that God is particularly interested in is marriage. This month, our sub-theme is God's divine order in marriage, which means how God has arranged marriage, how God has ordained marriage to be. Hear me, friends. In these days of social media, you will learn a lot of things from social media. You can go there and learn about relationships, about different activities. Also, people go to social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and the rest, to learn about marriage. Which means, you might not take a, pa a notepad and say, I want to learn about marriage, but you listen every now and again. Somebody comes up and he speaks about his or her marriage. And he says, this is how things should be. If you are not careful, you will take it hook, line, and sinker unconsciously. You will believe it unconsciously. However, it is the only the word of God that is infallible. One of the videos we saw last week and two weeks ago that we saw here spoke about the variables in marriage. The different things that are in marriage. The variables are many. And because the variables are many, no two marriages are the same. Amen. No two marriages are the same. Some marriages... You see a quiet man, a, a, you know, an outgoing woman. 
the way that they will relate with each other will be a different, a, a little different if the, the personalities were reversed. Am I making sense to you? Because the personalities at times can be reversed. But regardless of the personalities, regardless of who and who is involved, when it comes to believers, Jesus, our God, in his word, has given us how marriages should be. So you cannot say, this is my temperament. My wife should accept me like that. Oh, this is my temperament. My husband should accept me like that. Oh, my wife, should be you know, accept whatever I do like that. No, you have come into a new family. Let somebody say amen. amen. Whether you are a man or a woman, you now begin to see all the teachings that God has been giving us here. You see them coming together as we progress. You have come into a new family. You are a different person now. The blood of Jesus runs in your, in your spiritual lineage. You are now a child of God. Amen. So if in your family, they say, we have our family, our, our hallmark is anger. Ah, we are angry people. They know. In fact, it is by anger you know that I'm the true son of my father. No, you have left that family now. You have come into the family of God. In the family of God, we are known by patience, by calmness, love, brotherly kindness. Those are the things we are known by. So you must live by the principles that operates in the family of God. You have come into a new family. It does not matter whether you are the leader or you are the follower. The principles are clear. They remain the same. So if I, as a pastor, I'm always angry. So maybe people in the technical unit make a mistake now. I throw the microphone and hit the head of the head of technical. And they say, why? I'll say, yeah, I say, I did it under the anointing. Is it the anointing? It's not the anointing. It means that I'm not a matured believer. A matured believer is self-controlled. People will offend you many times. Hallelujah. People will offend you. People will do many things to you. But maturity will make you calm. Hallelujah. Maturity, when we are dealing also one with another, somebody you know, looks at you and he says something very rash or rude to you. What do you do? Do you get angry and say, ah, is it because we are in church? If they burn you well, come outside the gate and say the same thing. If I will not show you Pepe. Hallelujah. And they will say, ah, that man, you know in their family, they have, no, you have come into a new family. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus if you understand what I'm saying. You are a different person now. The gospel that does not change your character is not the gospel of Christ. Any gospel, any preaching that does not change your character, that does not change the way you behave, whether you are a man or a woman, it is not important. Any preaching, any teaching of the word of God, any gospel that does not change your character, your pattern of behavior is not the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ will change you from within. You will become a new person. I've told you severally how when I just got born again and I got back home from the boarding house, I used to be such a naughty young boy. So when I got back from home on, on holidays, my siblings and my parents, of course, they knew how naughty I could be. So I got home and they, will, they observed, they, they, they could not put their fingers on it. They could just observe that something had changed about this young boy. So they started observing me. I didn't have to be pressed to do my chores in the home anymore. If you send me somewhere and there is change, I would return it. They would say, ah, something is happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because Christ began to change me from within. Then I was going from glory to glory. From grace to grace, from strength to strength, I just kept getting better. It was that change that my family members witnessed that made them give their life to Christ, not my preaching. They saw a real change in me. They saw it. So any Christianity, any born-again decision you take that does not change you from within, in such a manner that other people will look at you and say, ah, this person has changed. It's not, it's not from Christ. You have not accepted Christ. Christ will change you from within. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible was speaking in the book of Psalms. He said he desires truth in the inmost being. The Lord does not change you from outside. He changes, he changes you from where? From inside. When a man is changed from inside, changing outside is, is easy. That's why as a believer or as a pastor, you will never find me running after people. Don't, don't wear this. Don't wear that. Don't do this. No. Let the word of God be dispensed to them. 
When they change inside, it will reflect outside. Hallelujah. So now, when we don't start talking about marriage, you must also know that when it comes to marriage, you cannot only embrace the part of the word of God that makes you happy. You must also em embrace the part of the word of God that tastes bitter in your mouth. Hallelujah. You see the word of God as you see it, and I'm a student of the word of God for many years now. The word of God as you see it has different sides. There are times the word of God can make you very excited. Maybe when you receive great promises of God, he says you are the head and you are not the tail. You are above only, you will never be beneath. Ah, you say me? He says yes, that the blessings of God are upon you. When you, you hear the promises of God, say you are blessed with the blessings of heaven above, you are blessed with the blessings of the earth beneath, you are blessed with the blessings of the breast and of the womb, that your blessings are surprised the bless, surpass the blessings of your progenitors. You will say, my God, that is what I want. Oh, this word of God is exciting. Then another time, the word of God will come. Then he begins to say, thou shalt not. And those thou shalt not are the things you really want to do. Then at those times, it will taste bitter in your mouth. It will say, when they strike you on the right cheek, turn the left. You say, eh? I reject it in Jesus' name. Bros, you can't reject it. You have embraced the promises. You must also embrace the instructions. Hallelujah. So when it comes to marriage, there are also instructions. Do not think that the word of God is all about blessings. There are blessings. There are instructions. And it is when these instructions are followed that the home is beautiful, that the home is blissful, that the marriage becomes a wonderful one. It is when these instructions are followed. I want to encourage you, friends. Do not joke with the instructions of the word of God. Those who embrace it, their lives get better. Those who do not embrace it, their tears is waiting for them at the end of their journey. Or even along the journey. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke a parable. He said, anyone who hears the word of God and he puts them into practice, how did he describe the person? He said, it's like a man who built his house where? Upon the rock. And you know what followed? He said, when the flood came, when the storm came, you know he did not say if the flood came. If the storm came. No. When? Because in this life, all of us, there will be stormy times. There will be difficult. If you are not having it now, wait for it. It's on its way. It's gathering moment. It's doing push-up. It's doing press-up. Wait. It's normal. God uses it to strengthen us. God uses it to make us better. God does not like lily livered children. That any little thing, you are falling apart. No. But Jesus said, if anybody hears and obeys his word, he's like a man who has built his house upon the rock. When the storm came and beats upon that house, it cannot push it down. It is built upon the rock, the foundation of the word of God. He said, but the one who hears the word and does not do them, what kind of person is he? He said, it's like a man that did what? That built his house where? On the sand. When the storm came, how did it fall? Like a pack of cards. You see a lot of families, a lot of homes falling now. How? Like a pack of cards. Even if church people. I wouldn't say believers. Because for you to be a believer, you must believe the word of God. Many people are in church. They don't believe the word of God. They are church people. Hallelujah. So hear me. Many homes are falling like pack of cards. Many supposed Christian arrangements that we come, must comfort. All these things you must do with your wife. God's plan for her. Amen. How you must you know, protect her. Do many things for her. That is the responsibility of the father. So today we are going to move on to God's instruction to the woman. This is also very important and I would like you to listen and listen closely. Look, being beautiful does not make you a good wife. There are many beautiful people who are not good wives. Amen. Being beautiful does not mean that you will have a successful home. There are many beautiful people that when men see them outside, they will say, my God, God must have spent extra time on this one to, to, to mold her. Because she's so beautiful. 
But when men move close, they will say, ha! They say, maybe God spent extra time, but it must be the devil that poured the content inside. Hallelujah! Because the principles of the word of God are not living in the person. So today, we want to look at the principles of the word of God. Age old principles. I am not going to bring to you things that you have never heard. Or some of you probably have never had it. Or maybe you have never had it the way we will bring it today. But they are still the principles of the word of God. Please, don't argue with it. You remember when we were looking at the parable of the sower? The reason why some yielded fruit. One key reason. What's the reason? I've taught you this before. What was peculiar about those who yielded it? Who yielded 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold? They accepted the word. They are the ones that accept the word. You must understand it, that the word of God is not for debate. They say, this is what the Bible says. You say, well, me, I don't agree. Oh, who do you think you are? Hallelujah. The word of God, you want your life to be fruitful? And don't forget, this is our year of much room and what? And fruitfulness. You want your life to be fruitful? 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold? The first thing you must do is to learn to accept the word of God. It's not for debate. The word of God is not for debate. It's for acceptance. When you accept it, it will go deep into your life and begin to make you to yield fruit. Even in areas that you do not expect, you will produce fruit. Because the word of God is powerful. The word of God cannot be changed. That's why the scripture says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's already settled. You can't change it. Hallelujah. So, it is in your own interest to learn the word of God and to believe the word of God. Now, listen. If God has placed such a heavy responsibility on the shoulders of men, to be the protector, the provider, like Miles Moreau called it, the house bond. You know? To be the Abba, the source and provider. It's very tough. A woman was cleaning the house and she got so tired. And when the husband got home from work, she said, I am tired of slaving for you in this house. Look at me. Since I woke up this morning, I took care of the children. I swept the house. I cleaned the kitchen. I cooked the food. I am tired. I, am I a slave? And the man looked at him and uh, looked at her and said, well, you are not a slave. I respect what you are doing. Thank you, my darling wife. God bless you. Um, you know, today is the last day of, uh, of the month. They have paid us. This is the money. I have gone to work, waking up, leaving home 5 a.m. every day. Hallelujah. 5 a.m. every day. For one month, there were days I worked on Saturdays and Sundays. Eh, see, this is the money they gave me. Please, eh, you know, they said the children's school fees is due. Take half of it for the children's school fees. Eh, eh, you know, you want to cook in the house. Take one quarter of it for the food for the month. Eh, eh, you said you were, they said you should buy that, I uh, should be in your family for that function. Take one fifth of it. By the time, he finished. He was only left with transport money for the month. Then the woman broke down and started crying. Who is slaving for who? Who is serving who? Let me tell you, it's not just the man. We are serving one another. So you must never get angry. When you look at your own responsibilities and think you are the only one, no. You are working together. You have become one flesh. You must never divide it. The man is slaving for the wife and his children. The woman also is slaving <laughs> for the man and the children. You must understand it. So don't be angry against the other person. Amen. Don't be angry. You want your home to be beautiful and blissful? Understand your own position, your own roles, and fulfill it. And you'll be amazed how your life will be beautiful. Hallelujah. Let somebody say amen. Amen. So today we want to look again at God's instructions, biblical injunctions, marital injunctions to the woman. What God has said about the woman in the home. How should a woman relate with her husband? 
God's divine order in marriage. This is how God has programmed it to be. Those who follow it, their homes will be beautiful. Amen. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. And that's where we are going to start from. Because you must understand that the word of God is very clear on these matters. The word of God is very, very clear on these matters. Very, very clear. The instructions that the Lord gave to the wives. See how many days we've been teaching for hours. We have done part one. We did that last year. Four weeks of teaching. We are in part two. This is the third week of teaching. You now see, if they now say, marriage counseling, you now do it one week before your wedding. For one hour or two hours. And they say the marriages are having issues. No, we are supposed to teach it. Take our time to teach it. So let's begin to look at it. Hallelujah. The wives. This is not about all women. Let me correct some. Some people say, oh, the man is always the head of the woman. No. Every man is not the head of every woman. The husband is the head of his wife. Do you understand? And you will see something interesting here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Have you ever looked at it that way before? Submit yourself to who? Your own husband. What does that tell you? Eh? There are other husbands. Husbands of other people. They are <laughs> Prof, don't come and confuse me. Eh? There are other husbands. Ah, you know. You know, this thing can be dangerous. <laughs> you remember, that's why, you know, sisters, make sure you marry a brother that reads the Bible. Amen. Make sure you marry a brother that reads the Bible. There is this joke about what happened on a wedding day. That the pastor stood in front. The, the bride and the groom, they also stood. So, they said, pastor said, bro, read the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. <laughs> you know this story, I mean. eh? John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Read it to your, uh, to your wife. The bro did not know that there is a difference between John and 1 John. What is in 1 John? This is what the pastor wanted him to read. 1 John 4, 18. Can somebody help me? Open your Bibles. You must be reading the Bible. Don't go and disgrace me outside one day. What is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18? Oh, yeah, now open it. And if you know it often, let's hear it. No, I want King James. Uh-huh. I know some people will know that kind of scripture. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> First John chapter 4, verse 18. What does he say? He said, There is no fear in love. So the pastor said, Open first John 4 18. Read it to your to your bride. And first John 4 18, this is what he's supposed to read. He said, there, he's supposed to just open it and read. And you know, we have uh, the wedding date zone. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casted out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect. In love. You know that is so sweet. And the woman will just be smiling and say, oh, there is no fear in love. Perfect. But the brother did not know the, that there is a difference between 1 John and the book of John, St. John, the gospel according to St. John. So he now read John chapter 4, verse 18 to the... He opened John 4, 18 and read it to the wife. What is there? For that was had five husbands. The woman was like, ah. <laughs> and he whom thou have now is not your husband. <laughs> In that says thou truly. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Imagine on the wedding day. The boy, the brother looks at the sister and says, For you have had five husbands. <laughs> and the one you have now is not your husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must be a student of the word of God. The word of God is the foundation of a happy home. He is not the experience of your parents. He is not native intelligence. He is not the, 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 these strange generalizations that we have. People are different from one another. Hallelujah. So you want to know how to behave in your home? What does the word of God say? Let somebody say amen. amen. Let somebody say a good amen. amen. So the instructions of God to the, to the women. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husband. He says, what should the woman do? You are a wife now. What should you do? You must submit to your husband. To your own husband. And this is the first teaching. First point of the teaching. I'm going to come back to the word submit. But I want to first of all look at your own husband. You see, there are many women who submit to other people's husbands. You know there are some women. It does not matter what their husband says at home. It's until one man, maybe their uncle. Or maybe the husband's older brother. Or maybe, you know, they just have somebody that, when the person talks, they will not keep quiet. The husband says, go in this direction. She says, I'm not going. Hey! It becomes an argument. The husband now knows who, you know, the husband knows who to call. Hey. But that luckily, I don't know what to do about this one again. She's being stubborn. But Alakule will then come and say, Yao, go that way. Then she will get up grudgingly and go there. You ask, who are you submitting to? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Another person's husband. Can you begin to see the scripture? He says, wives, submit yourself. Uh, so that word submit is what we are coming to sit on today. Submit yourself. To your own husband. Your husband must never give you an instruction and you refuse, you refuse to follow it. No. If you have a contrary opinion, explain it to him. If he still insists, you follow what your husband says. A particular brother wanted to start out in a new dimension of career. And because we are quite close, and he's like a younger brother to me in the faith, the wife knew this. So, but the wife didn't agree with what the man wanted to do now that I want to now be doing this. I want to leave what I'm doing now to focus on this. So the woman was troubled. Ah, I, ah no. So in, the, in one of the evenings, the woman came to me, called me and said, please, sir, I want to come and see you. I said, no problem, come to the house. She came and we sat down, and in my usual manner, we were, I was gisting with her, playing. And after a while, when I saw that, okay, the atmosphere was calm enough, I said, okay, so what's the problem? Then she started talking to me. She said, ah, please, daddy, my husband says he wants to do this and this, and that's the direction we are going now. Ah, please, daddy, I'm, I'm afraid. I, say, I said, so what do you want? She said, please help me tell him that that's not the right thing. And I smiled. I said, who is your husband? She said, yeah, he's my husband. You know him. I said, follow your husband. She said, eh? I said, yes, I am not your husband. If your husband says this is the direction this family is going now, he is the head of the home. Follow your husband. Support him with a lot of prayers. Fast, pray that that which he has decided to do will succeed. Well, you can't come and follow me. Follow your husband. She was so confused. Now we look back a few years down the line. What the man decided to do is now successful. And I'm giving you practical. What that man decided is now successful. He's still getting better. But the, all the parameters of success, are shine, they are shining brightly. Things are working out. So the last time I went there to see them, ah, the woman was well-dressed. She stood there, she sat there, I looked at her, and I smiled. Follow your husband. Submit to your own husband. 
Don't let your husband always have somebody else that he has to contact to force you to, to follow what he wants you to do. No. You must submit to your own husband. The church is the place of learning. Hallelujah. The church is a place of learning. We learn the word of God. Excuse me. All right. So, we'll, ca- we'll carry on. The generator will come up. The church is a place of learning. Learning the word of God. Learning how God wants us to live and how he wants us to operate. So when we come to the church, we must learn. We must embrace whatever the Lord is teaching us so that we become all that he wants us to be. If you do not learn what God wants to teach you, you will never become who God wants you to be. Amen. Don't be distracted. Just stay calm. The the light will come up. Until you begin to learn, and that's why we go through all these teachings. Nobody is born with it. We learn it. That's why Jesus was speaking in the book of Matthew. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. When you become a child of God, the things you should know does not jump on you. You must learn it. That's why also when Apostle Paul was speaking in a particular place, he said this and this and this is what the Lord has instructed us to do. If anybody wants to do something else, he said we have not so learned Christ. We learn of Christ. Hallelujah. We learn the principles of the word of God. And that's what we are learning. And the word of God says, wives, not women. Can you see the difference? Wives. For those who are married, you are a wife. And as a wife, submit to your own husband. Your husband comes back and he meets you in the middle of an argument with a neighbor. Your husband must never say it twice. The man comes and he sees you in the middle of an argument. And he says, Bala, enough. Go inside the house. He must not say it two times. Somebody says, does that mean I'm stupid? No, it means you are submitting to your own husband. Am I making sense to you? The Bible says, wives, submit yourself to your own husband. Why did the Bible say we should submit? The scripture says we should submit. Um, Taiwo, can you switch on this light? Are the batteries there? They submit to your own husbands. Why? Because the responsibility that the man is carrying is what? He's heavy. He's trying to provide for you. Trying to provide for the children. He's praying. He's protecting you. Don't make it more difficult. Am I making sense to you? Some women make it very difficult for their husbands. Don't make it more difficult. When you submit and you follow him, you you lighten up his work. You reduce the stress. You reduce the pressure that he's going through. But if you are cantankerous, you are always quarreling and nagging and fighting him. Hallelujah. You make it very difficult. You make his work difficult. As a woman, the Lord is saying, submit to your husband. Don't make his work more difficult than it should be. Let somebody say amen. Amen. Don't make it more difficult than it should be. So wives... Submit to your own husband. Now, before we now begin to analyze the word submit, I want to quickly mention something. Nowadays, and thank God for social media, we have found several people, several people come up now, they'll say, ah, several women have come up, they say, I can't submit to any man. My husband, yes, I have a husband, but I can't submit to him. The home will be in turmoil. Even if the man does not fight you, you know what will happen? The home will not have direction. There cannot be two captains in a ship. Am I making sense to you? Have you ever seen a car with two drivers? That there are two steering wheels in in the same car. Think of it. Two steering wheels in the same car. A different set of accelerator and brake. Accelerator and brake. What is going to happen to that car? Eh? It will do what? Okay, it will break apart. 
And that's a good one. It will break apart. That's why homes break apart. Hallelujah. Please, you must understand it. There cannot be two drivers in the same car. There can't be two drivers. So God says, submit to your husband so that his work will not be difficult. Amen. Don't make his heavy responsibility heavier. Don't make it heavier. When you submit, it becomes easier for him to lead. But now we want to start looking at the word submit. Many women nowadays will say, I can't submit. I can't submit my life. I can't submit uh, whatever it is to this man. If you look at a man and you think you can't submit to him, don't marry him. Because once you marry him, he is your head. And God expects you to submit to his leadership. It does not mean that he's perfect. It does not mean that he's the most intelligent. It does not even mean that he will not make wrong decisions. But it means that you have agreed to follow him in this life. Because once you are married, you have come under him, you must submit. What does it mean to submit? And that's what we, must exp- we want to explore today. To submit means to honor. Let somebody say honor. I can't hear you. Say honor. Say it very well. Hallelujah. When you marry a man, you must honor him. You must honor that man. Amen. What does it mean to honor a person? To honor a person means to hold the person in high esteem. Give me an example, apart from the husband, the kind of people that we hold in high esteem, that we look at and we honor them. Give me examples. Like the president. You know the president, whether you like him or not, if he's coming here, you will see that everybody must be at a standstill. Amen. That is called honor. You cannot say, I didn't even vote for him. So when his uh, entourage is coming, you now go and stand in the middle of the road. You say, I, he just got there by accident. I didn't vote for him. I voted for another person. What will happen to you? Uh, you, you don't even want to know what will happen to you. So to, to, to submit means to honor to hold in high esteem. Sisters, once you get married, you must honor your husband. Regardless of what is happening at any time. Honor your husbands. There are some people that don't like the, to hear the voice of their husbands. They are talking, whether in private or in public. Once the man says, um, you know what I'm saying? The woman shouts. You don't shout your, your husband down. Honor your husband. If you honor a person... How does it show? It shows in different ways. It shows in your action. It shows in your speech. It shows in your demeanor. Am I making sense to you? If you respect a person so much, the first thing is that you will mind how you speak to the person. Amen. Remember your father, for those of us that grew up under fathers, you know you don't talk to your daddy anyhow. There is a way you talk to him. Regardless of what is happening, he is daddy. And also, you cannot stand anybody insulting your daddy. Do you know that? Can you stand anybody insulting your father? Amen. You cannot. The same way with your husband. Because he occupies that position... You must honor him. You must hold him in high esteem. And how does that show? First, in your speech. It does not mean that you won't have fun or joke with each other. But there are things that are rude. You don't speak rude words to your husband. You don't shout your husband down. You don't speak to him anyhow. Whether in private or in public. It's worse in public. But whether in private or in public... You don't speak rudely to your husband. It also shows, if you honor a person, it shows in your action. How do you act? If your husband says, uh, can you get that thing for me? Can't you, uh, what is it? Can't you stand up? Don't you have legs? Can't you get it yourself? No. That's not how. 
you talk to your husband. You deal with your husband in honor, esteem. Also in your demeanor, how do you look? As a woman, your husband says something that you disagree with. You don't talk, oh, but your eyes are talking. You know some people, the way they'll be looking at the man. That is, if not that I respect you, I for don't slap you now. I can, you know, you use your eyes to carry him up and down, up and down. Ah, no. People do that a lot. Let me tell you why these things are wrong. All these things, as simple as they sound, is always, that is usually the beginning of a broken home. Because if you continue like that with a man, the man might not hit you, he might not slap you, he might not shout, but you are hurting him. Because you are bruising his ego as a man. You know what will happen? After a while, he, does not, he will not be coming home too early again. Even if he finishes from work early, he will find somewhere to go and sit down with his friends. Amen. It is in sitting down with his friends, they will say, ah, ah, bros, everywhere is just dry. Let's take one, one bottle now. Okay, he didn't used to drink before. He said, I'm not even going home until evening. And one bottle is not bad now. He takes one bottle. Then they will introduce him to adultery. Your home is gradually going. What is happening? You have, by your speech, your action, your attitude, you have pushed him out. Submission at the end of the day will benefit the woman. It will keep your home stable and beautiful. May the Lord give us grace in Jesus' name. Secondly, to submit means to respect. I've decided to break it down so that we'll understand when the Bible says, wives, submit yourself to your own husband. It means to show respect. Show respect to your husband. If you are single, and a brother comes to you and he says, I want to marry you. If you look at him from head to toe, and he does not look at, like the kind of person you can respect, tell him, no, I can't marry you. Because once you marry a man, you must respect him. You must respect his opinion. You must respect his person. It's very important. These are the secrets of a happy home. To submit means to respect your husband. Number three, to submit means to be self-controlled when you are relating with your husband. Now, this is very important. It means to control yourself. At times, your husband will tell you to do something, or your husband will even do something, and you will be angry. You will be upset. And at times, you have the right to be upset by what your husband has been done. Well, sorry, uh, uh, by what has been done by your husband. Hallelujah. But a submissive woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But a submissive woman will not act out her anger. Hear me. Just leave the light alone. Some people don't want me to preach this message today. I will preach it. I can preach it with my mouth only. Hallelujah. Amen. A submissive woman, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. A submissive woman controls herself. One of the signs that you are submissive as a woman is how you control yourself, especially when you are upset. Your husband will do things that will annoy you. You don't know. Many times, your husband will do things that will make you angry. He's a human being. The same way you also do things that annoy him. Amen. So your husband too, from time to time, will do things that will annoy you. He will do things that will make you upset. Hallelujah. That will make you feel like telling him off. But if you are submissive, you will control your anger at that time. You will control yourself at that time. You will act out your ill feeling. That's how a submissive woman behaves. A submissive woman controls herself, even in the heat of anger. Hallelujah. Can you call the technical person? All of them cannot be outside at the same time. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So, a submissive woman controls herself, controls her anger. Some people will say, me, I just say things the way they are. Is that how you say it in your office? When you are in the office and your boss annoys you, you say it the way it is. That's the time we know you have wisdom now. You go like this, you go like that, and you present it with wisdom. So why not use that same kind of wisdom in your home? You must keep your home calm. Amen. You see, the home is not the place of claiming right. I know a lady. She was cutting a, 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 a man. And they were already planning their wedding. But after a while, any little disagreement they have, she jumps up. You have no right to say this. You have no right. Until the man said, well, it's true, I have no right. But there is only one right I still have now. I have the right not to marry you. So that is the right I want to exercise now. She is still single. This discussion is about 12 years ago. What am I saying? About 13 years ago. The home is not a place for claiming rights. The home is not a place for claiming rights. The family is not a place where you say, this is my right. As a man, from time to time, you will let go of your rights. As a woman, from time to time, you will let go of your rights. Hallelujah. So that you can have peace and tranquility in the home. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, submission. What does it mean to submit? I'm giving you four words to explain the word submission. To submit means to deny yourself. To, to deny yourself. That's what it means to submit. Self-denial. Self-denial. What does it mean to deny yourself? Who knows what that means? Can we reduce the movement, please? You deserve to have a thing, but you don't insist on having your way. You understand? It can be on both directions, but what it simply means is that you don't insist on having your way. Something is your right. Hallelujah. You have a right to it. Hallelujah. All right? So you have a right to do something. But because of something else, thank you for the way you explain it, uh, my sister. Because of something else, you let it go. Give me an example of a common way we can deny ourselves. Something is legitimately your right, but you say, ah, because of this, okay, I will let it go. Ah, everybody is thinking the same thing. So, do you have a right? So, we talk about fasting. You know, fasting is self-denial. You are denying yourself of food. Do you have a right to eat? Are you supposed to eat? Yes. But because you want to pray, and you want your spirit to be sensitive, you deny your body of food. So you say you are fasting. You see, when a woman gets married, and the Bible says you should submit, one of the meanings of submission is self-denial. When you deny yourself at times of your legitimate right, it goes both ways. And people will say, leave that home and just pack out. The man is a useless man. And she has a right to leave the home. She has a right to leave the home. But she will say, I will not leave the home. Why? Because of my Children. Some of them will say, I'm sacrificing because of my children. What is she doing? She's denying herself. That's what is called self-denial. I'm explaining that word. That's what is called self-denial. You see, in marriage, one of the things that connotes submission is self-denial. When we deny ourselves of things that are our right, the reason why we take all these teachings is even for those of us that are not yet married. As young men and women, 
you must know what you are about to get into. Many people think marriage is just, you know, like that wedding day as you are dancing and you are singing, everybody shouting, hey, hey, go, go, hey, hey, and you are dancing, go, go, hey, hey. And that one is just for one hour. The real go, go is waiting for you. Hallelujah. So, that's why if you go to America, some people will divorce after one week. They say, ah, one week of marriage, you are divorcing. They say, I didn't even know it was like this. When we were cutting, it was so sweet. But now, ah, because when you get into the real thing, it's real life. Let somebody say amen. amen. So let's look at an illustration, Sons of Solomon. In one of, the, one of the series, in one of the months, we are just going to dwell on Songs of Solomon. It's a beautiful book. Let's go to the book of Songs of Solomon, I believe, chapter 5. Songs. It's actually Song of Songs. But we call it Songs of Solomon. Song of Songs. Because the entire book, this book, the entire book is one song. Songs, chapter 5, verse 2. And I'll prefer NLT, New Living Translation. I want to show you an example of self-denial. Self-denial also is when you do something at times that you don't feel like doing just because of somebody else. As a woman, when you get married, there are times you will do things you don't feel like doing just because of your husband. And for the man also, there will be many times that you do things that you don't feel like doing just because of your wife. Self-denial is one of the things that stabilizes marriage. When you go the extra mile for the other person. Let's look at it. It's one part of the Song of Songs, but it's beautiful. Amen. Let somebody say amen. amen. I want to be sure you are still here. Say amen. amen. Now look at it. Now this is the woman. If you read the Song of Songs, the woman will speak. The man also would speak. So in this case, this is the woman speaking. Now look at it. Very poetic, very beautiful, like love songs, but it's in the Bible. He says, I slept, but my heart was awake. Is this not really romantic? Very poetic. Eh? Okwe, you like this kind of... When some, imagine someone writes, writing to you and says, Oh, Okwe, yesterday I slept, but my heart was awake. I was thinking of you. Ah, uh, you feel like, oh my, I feel so loved. Hallelujah. Is this prophetic? Maybe somebody has been writing to a prayer. About to. Uh, you have been keeping it under your pillow. Don't worry, we will check your phone. Okay, now, see. Hope I'm even giving the brothers some nice lines, you know. You know, don't be too serious. You know. I see some people writing it down. Don't worry, it's in your Bible too. Yeah, you can read it up. All right. He says, I slept, but my heart was awake. This is the woman speaking. When I heard my lover knocking and calling. So look at it. The woman was inside. So her lover came. The man came. Said, my heart was awake. Then I, I heard my lover knocking and calling. Open to me my treasure, my darling, my dove, my perfect one. Uh -uh. In the Bible... Open to me my treasure, my darling, my dove, my perfect one. You see how Solomon ended up with 1,000 women. It's this, it's this kind of thing that got him into trouble. After writing it, the one we, that one would have packed a load and come. He said, ah, but can I share I was just joking. Joe, that was how he ended up with 1,000 women. <laughs> After writing, because the Bible said he wrote, I, did I say the Bible? History. Theologians, they said, he, all these kind of songs, he wrote about 1,500 of them. Of the, see the Song of Songs. The other book. He wrote about 1,500 of such poems. Maybe it was one per woman. You know, you know that kind of thing. Maybe it was one per woman. He sees one beautiful woman. He will just... Spin one nice poem, and the woman will be swept up at his as we are moving. 
one, two, hundred, two hundred. He ended up with one thousand women. Okay, so he says, the man says, open to me my treasure, my darling, my, my doe, my perfect one. This is the man still speaking. My head is drenched with dew. That is, the man was outside. My hair with the dampness of the night. Let's go on. Now look at the response of the woman. But I responded. Please, everybody pay attention. This is a very important thing I'm showing you. I'm just trying to lighten it up. Say, so, but I responded. That is the woman. I have taken off my robe. Should I get dressed again? I have washed my feet. Should I get them soiled? Should I get them soiled? You don't understand it. The woman was in bed. She had taken her bath. She had taken off her clothes. She probably was wearing her nightgown. While she was now already sleeping on her bed, the man came and knocked on the door. Hallelujah. Because they were not yet married. So the woman said, oh, I have taken off my robe. Should I dress again? I have washed my feet. Should I get them soiled again? Oh, I don't want to dirty myself again. I'm already in bed. Praise God. Let's go on. Verse 4. He says, my lover tried to unlatch the door. And my heart thrilled within me. Let's go. I jumped up to open the door for my love. What did she do? Did she want to jump up? Why? Because she had already settled in for the night. She had taken her bath. Don't forget, they live in the desert. Israel, if you still go to Israel today, is in the desert. So it's always very dusty. So if you go through the day, your chores, everything you have done, by evening, you don't go to bed without taking a bath. You are very dusty. So she had taken her bath. And so oh, I've washed my feet. I'm getting up. What did she do? She got up. That's self denial. When you marry, you will do things that you don't feel like doing for your husband. Also for the man. When you marry, you will do many times you will do things that you don't feel like doing for your wife. It is called love. Some people must always have their way. Once they think something or they want to do something, they must always have their way. Once a marriage is like that, the marriage will eventually crumble. You must learn how to bend for each other. Don't always want to force your way through. What you find in many homes is that one partner there is, is always more accommodating, always allowing the other person. So the other person gets worse in having his or her way. If you respect your husband as a woman, don't always push. Everything you want to do, you must have your way. I'm not saying that you must not have an opinion. You have an opinion. State your position to your husband. But if you are, your opinion is a conflict with the opinion of your husband, don't always, all the time, fight to have your way. If you fight all the time to have your way, after a while, the man will leave you and be watching you. The day he has a good advice for you, he will not give you. He will say, she will not hear. Do you know there are people like that? Who never listen? If you like, don't respond to me. Who never listen? They must always have their way. I know people like that, that if they don't have their way, all the hell will break loose in that house. There will be fine. Ah, until they have their way. And that's how one day, you will be about to make a wrong decision, and then you will be in trouble. You didn't fix the microphone. And then you will be in trouble. Hallelujah. You must have, uh, what is it called? You must have self-denial. You must learn it. You must learn to deny yourself. Don't always fight. All the time you must have your way. It will get to a point that the other partner will be hurt. Amen. And the day is supposed to help you and show you what you are not seeing by yourself, it will keep quiet. Marriage is companionship, is a partnership. You can't see it all, you can't know it all. As a woman, your opinion is valuable to your husband. You must also know that your husband's opinion is valuable to you. It's very important. 
If you go and pull one trouble, eh? pull something that you should not pull, and the thing becomes problematic, what will happen? It's your husband that will eventually have to solve the problem. That's why you must listen to him from the beginning. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. All the biblical instructions to women, because today we are speaking about women. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3. How you must honor, from verse 1, how a woman must honor and respect her husband. Let's look at this scripture. Are we still here? If you are still here, say amen. amen. Look at it. It says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husband. Is this the Bible? How many of us believe the Bible? How many of us made the declaration we made before the teaching this morning? That we will look closely at the word of God. We will keep the word of God in our hearts. Eh? Whether it's sweet or bitter. And this is the word of God. The one we were reading before, eh? it was in the book of uh, Ephesians. Who wrote the book of Ephesians? Talk to me. Paul, the apostle. Now we are reading from which book? First Peter. Who wrote the book of First Peter? Peter. Two different people. Peter, saying the same thing, also said, in the same way, you wives must do what? Accept the authority of your husband. This is the Bible. People of the world will say, ah, I can't submit to, eh, me submit to anybody. That's their own. You as a child of God, you are different. God expects something different from you. As children of God, we do not build our homes with the principles of the world. We, bring, we build our homes with the principles of the word of God. And the principle of the word of God says, you wives must accept the authority of your husband. Even if your husband is very gentle, he has authority over you. Accept it for your home to be peaceful. He says, then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, that is some men, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over. So the Bible is saying, what if your husband is even an unbeliever? And he says, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in all those things. Peter says, don't fight him. Don't fight that man. Say, you are a useless man. What kind of example are you laying for our children? You are not going to church. You are not serving God. No. He says, right before him, you will live the good life of a Christian. He says, as you continue to live the good life of a Christian, in submission to him, what did the Bible say will happen? He will be won over. He too will give his life to Christ. That's how many people in the past gave their lives to Christ. Some of those men eventually even rose to become greater believers than their wives. How many of us read the story of Smith Wigglesworth? But how many of us have had the name Smith Wigglesworth before? One of the great generals of old. He was an apostle that operated in a great healing anointing in his days. And he himself carried in his own body great healing. At the age of 80, he had a perfect set of teeth. Not one of his tooth fell down. Always well, always healed. There was a time he had kidney stone. In those days when there was no, you know, not, you know there, then the, uh, when medical knowledge was very limited, the stones by prayer and faith, standing on the word of God, the stones came out of him and dropped on the floor. The kidney stones. Great servant of God. But how did he get born again? He was an unbeliever, a plumber. Because he was a plumber. The wife was born again. But he hated everything called Christianity. So he would harass the wife and do all sorts of things. The woman will not fight. The woman continued to live like a godly woman in the house. So one day, during winter, for those of us that have never traveled and experienced winter, it cannot be described to Nigerians. I can't describe it. I'm telling you, I cannot describe it. I remember many years ago, when I first started traveling, and I came back, my mother, God bless her, so asked me, Doku, they say London is very cold. So now that you have come back, how was it? I said, and I went in the, 
at the peak of winter. And I said, ah, it was cold. She said, describe it to me. I stood. I didn't know how to describe it. But she used to sell frozen fish. So I said, let me use the frozen fish experience. I said, you remember when you enter into the cold room? When the cold room has been closed overnight, and they open it, and you are the first person to enter. Ah, she said, that cold room can be really cold. I said, yes. I said, so imagine the whole world, everywhere you are, it's a cold room. She said, eh? I said, that's the only way I can describe it. Now, it was at the peak of winter. The wife of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth then, not yet born again, his wife went out for a church program. And when Smith Wigglesworth got home, he was very angry. She has gone to church again? This church? Nonsense. So he went out. He went inside and locked the door. Everywhere was cold outside. So by night, I don't know the exact time, but by night, the woman came back and knocked on the door. Smith Wigglesworth had it. He was a very tough, very difficult man. He locked the door. He didn't open for her. During winter, people outside want to run inside so that you'll be warm. The woman was outside. Most times when people sleep outside during winter, some people die before morning. Hear me. Smith Wigglesworth locked the door and did not allow the woman to come in till the following morning. So she sat, she slept at the door, covered herself with all her clothes and crouched at the door. Then by morning, he went there and opened the door. It's morning now. We opened the door of my house. If you are that woman, what will you do? Ah, all the women are quiet now. I know what some of you are saying. I would first of all put born again to one side. And I will show you today that I'm the true daughter of my mother. I, you know what the woman did? Very tough. Even me, I don't know if I can do it. The moment he opened the door, the woman got up and said, good morning, darling. What would you like for breakfast? And she went straight to the kitchen and started preparing his breakfast. That was what broke Smith Wigglesworth. He was, that action touched him to the core. He had done a very wicked thing. So he was waiting for a fight. But the woman refused. Do you think she was not angry? Do you think she didn't want to fight? She simply followed the principles of the word of God. She, as the door opened, she said, good morning, darling. What would you like to have for breakfast? And she went straight to the kitchen and started preparing breakfast for him. The, according to history, that was the beginning of the conversion of Smith Wigglesworth. After that day, he didn't do that a second time. Then gradually, he too started following out to church. Then he got converted. He then became the apostle. We, apart from a few stories, we didn't hear much about the woman. It was Smith Wigglesworth who now became the apostle of faith. There is an apostle of faith around you. What is your character doing to win him to Christ? That character is not just for outsiders. He's also in our homes. That is how Christian women behave. Christian women, you must submit to your husband. You must accept the authority of your husband, even if he does not behave well, even if he's an unbeliever. Because by doing that, you will eventually win your partner to Christ. How much more if he's now a believer, a child of God? Honor your husband. Accept his authority. That's what you signed for on your wedding day. In one of the future sessions, we are going to do an analysis of the, uh, of um, what's that oath we take on the wedding day? What is it called? Wedding, the marriage vow. Thank you. We are going to do an analysis of the marriage vow. And you will see what you are saying that day before God and men. Both men and women. So you see what you are about to get yourself into. Time has failed me. He says, how do they live? They live by observing to be pure and reverent. They live reverent lives, pure lives, holy lives. Let's go on. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty 
of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. Now, the Bible is not saying that you should not wear clothes, beautiful clothes, or jewelry. He said, but that's not the big thing. Once you get married, you must dress well, but that's not what will keep your home. Haven't you, real, at least in these days of social media, haven't you realized that when they show the pictures of many women, they say this one is getting a divorce. Don't you see how beautiful some of those women are? So beautiful, well-dressed, well-adorned in jewelry. You say, what is a man looking for again? That is not in this one. Because what will keep the home is beyond your beautiful hairstyle. Is this the Bible we are reading? Talk to me. Is this the Bible we are reading? I'm not the one that wrote it. I'm a messenger. So please see what the Bible is saying. It says, don't be too concerned. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of your fancy hairstyle. It is not bad, but that's not what will keep your home. Expensive jewelry. It is not bad if you can afford it. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that your, your face, your cheeks are beautiful with jewelry. So it is not a sin to wear jewelry. But that is not what will keep your home. Beautiful clothes. Yes, it's good when women wear beautiful clothes. But it's not the beautiful clothes that will keep your marriage. Let's go on to verse 4. You should clothe yourselves instead with what? The beauty that comes... Talk to me. The beauty that comes from where? From within. As a woman, your real beauty comes from inside. The way you behave. Your character. The way you talk. The way you act. The way you, you, you look. Your demeanor. Your beauty is from within. That is what will keep the home. You know, nowadays you find a lot of... I've, found, I've heard many times some ladies speaking... Beautiful ladies. I remember one at a wedding. And they were talking amongst themselves. And as they sat, very beautiful ladies, elegantly dressed. You see, you know when some ladies, when they say they're on point, everything on point. Very beautiful, exotic. They sat there, you know, and they were talking. I know who they were talking about. They were talking about the bride. And you know what they said? Thank God the bride did here. The most hurtful thing. You say, can't you see? The girl no even sat yeah, she's not even very fine. See how she say we we are single. See us. I don't even know what all these men are looking for. Look at look at us. They should be licking our feet. Look at us. See, see this one. This one self don't get us See this one. Then just bring her from village. Oh, this one too. Don't marry. Unknown to them that what men look for is different. Hallelujah. When it comes to marriage, what a man is looking for, what attracts a man is different. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. What is that beauty? The unfading beauty of what? A gentle and quiet spirit. This is the Bible. People don't teach these things again. Some pastors are so afraid that they are, the women in their church will get angry. I know the women in this church will get angry. I mean, will you be angry? Talk, eh? You're already angry. I can't hear them. Women, will you be angry? Uh -huh. I'm watching all the mouths. Is somebody not talking? The women at the back are not talking. Women in uh, healing streams, will you be angry as we are talking? Uh -huh. He says, clothe yourself with the beauty that comes from within. And the Bible did not leave us in doubt of what the Bible, the scripture is saying. What is that beauty? The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. A gentle and quiet spirit. You are not that woman that points your finger at the face of your husband. Don't be like that. You are not the woman that goes about reporting your husband to everybody. Don't be like that. You are not that woman who on the street, everybody knows what is happening in your home. Don't be like that. Some of you, your husband cannot be broke for one week. Everybody will know. You go out long face. Everybody say, ah, auntie, what's wrong with you? They didn't smile. Is he not that man? Is he not that man? He didn't, he didn't give money, me money for the actuality. You are carrying a lot because of actuality. What of the food you have been eating? He has paid the rent. He has paid the children's school fees. Mapao. No killer. Because many men have been killed by pressure. 
A lot of times, some people say, I'm just being a woman. Being, living like that as a woman can overpressure your husband. Though. And your husband is the only one you have, though, in case you don't know. Make I tell you again. Your husband is the one you have, is the one God has given you. You better take care of your husband and don't give him high blood pressure. All those people that are pushing you to misbehave to your husband, if you, if you ruin your husband's health, they will be the first to run away. They won't give you anything. So with your husband, you must be gentle. You must listen to him quietly. You don't do gri 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 with your husband. That home, that kind of home will not be peaceful. The ornament of a peaceful, of a gentle and a quiet spirit. Be a peaceful woman. Let's go on. This is how the holy men of old made themselves beautiful. How all the holy women, rather. This is how the holy women of old, this is how they made themselves beautiful. They trusted God and accepted the authority of their husbands. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. This is the Bible. The Bible said those holy women of old that we read their stories in the Bible, how they lived good lives, he said this is how they lived. They trusted God and they also submitted to the authority of their husbands. No woman eh, wants to have a husband that is weak or a husband that everybody will be kicking around. But most of the time, it's some women that, are, that breaks the authority of their husband. We are children of God. We will behave in line with the word of God. Let somebody say amen. amen. Give me verse 6. It says, for instance... Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him what? Her master. You are our daughters when you do what is right, without fear of what your husband might do. Can you see the scriptures? As we are teaching now, some people are thinking, if I submit to this man, ha, he will start marching on my head, oh. Some of these men are terrible. He says, you are the daughter of Sarah, if you do what is right, how? Without fear of what your husband might do. Next week, I am going to get to what happens when a man shows love, loves his wife, and the woman submits. Something is usually triggered. I will show you that next week. We have spoken the last two Sundays how the man must love, how the man must protect. But also, we are speaking today about the side of the woman, how the woman must submit. Once both parties fulfill those roles, there is something else that happens. It triggers something. I will show you that next week. But the Bible says this is how the holy women of old. That was how they lived. They did not give room to fear. Ha, ah, what if my husband now? What if my husband now? No, don't give room to fear. Go to verse 7. But now see the balance. I love, some, I love the Bible. The Bible will dance in this direction and quickly come back in the other direction. He says, in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. You know, we have spoken about wives, honor your husband. Abby? The Bible has flipped it again. That now, men, don't think uh, it's only the woman that should honor you. You too, you must do what? Honor your wives. There are some men, they speak to their wives anyhow when they're outside. Especially when their own family members are around. Your mother or your father or your siblings, your younger brother or sister are around. You want to show them you are the Baba in your house. Bala! What's wrong with you? You don't have to bark like a dog for them to know that you are the man of the house. In the eyes of your own family members too, honor your wife. Bonik Baba Sheikh Begba Elashema Bagbe. If you show people by your action that your wife is useless, you give her one kick. Ah, they will first of all dance. They will give her seven. Everybody will just start kicking her. My family members know. I love you. I respect you. I do everything. Don't cross the line to my wife. The day you cross the line to my wife, I go look at this. It does not matter. I will stop it there. You know, let's use street language. I go change them for you. 
You, and that's how it is. Even in church. I love you, all the members. I take care of you. The day you trespass and now go and talk to my wife and my children. That's the, I'll go change them for you. I'm telling you. You are looking at me. I'm, I will change it all. Uh, you will see the other side of me. Why? I am responsible for her protection. Am I making sense to you? I, it is my responsibility, number one responsibility. I must protect her. I must defend her. So if the day you want to misbehave, your wife, uh, my wife becomes your target, you must have two targets. Just know that you, are, you already have two targets. That is the way it is. Just know you are, because I will fight you to a standstill. It does not matter who you are. Even my family members know. We will show respect. I will show you respect. When you cross your boundary, if, if you tell me you have coconuted, I will say it's okay. It's still working, Shah. It's thinking. Your leg is long. Ah, we thank God for it. Long legs can be good. Your face is one kind. Ah, we give God the glory. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Once you cross to my wife and children, no argument again. Now fight. That's how it is. Treat your wife as you should so that your prayers will not be hindered. What does it mean? It means that if you don't, if you are married as a man and you don't treat your wife well, some of your prayers will not be answered. Did you hear what I said? Some of your prayers will not be answered. You must treat your wife well, love her, honor her, protect her, provide for her, provide for your family. Do everything that, that you have the power to do. I'm not saying do everything that your neighbor is doing. That you have the power to do. Do it. So that your prayers will not be hindered. Many men are praying for big contract. Lord, as I'm going today, today is the day we are going to defend this contract. Lord, let them give me the contract. The last contract you got, your wife, the, the breeze did not even blow on your wife that you made 10.5 million. You now want to go and collect 100 million. Your prayer will not be answered. Your strongest intercessor is your wife. You don't know. Do you know that if you take care of your wife with what you have, the day you tell her you are going to get another contract, she won't eat that day. She will just be, you will see the, the lion in her. She will be going up and down the house. She knows that, ah, Omo, if this thing comes out, you know my husband is due to buy me a new car. Hmm, maybe this is how God wants to do it. Oh, you know Pastor prophesied that my husband is going to give me, hey, maybe this is how he's going to do it. She has that interest there. But if she knows that the last contract you got and the one before that and the one before that, when the money came, eh, you spent it on yourself and some other people that we must not mention. The day you now say you are, and that was just 10.1 million. You now say you are going for 100 million. You will say, hey, God, let your will be done. You know when a woman tells God, God, we're going 10 million. We don't know where the money went to. It's almost divided the whole. He now says 100, 100 million. God, Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done. God understands what she's saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. You also must treat your wife well so that your prayers will not be hindered. You know what some, what some people say? Mm. I will not pray and I will not curse. He said, but my mouth will not be empty. You know what that one means? Hey, nigga, I got in the niche. You don't know what that means. God's divine order in marriage. It goes both ways. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband. There are, there are more scriptures I want to share with you, but the time has so gone, I have to stop. Maybe one of these days, I will be able to share. Or let me, if I go into one of them again, we will enter another dimension. But let's, let's look at, let's go back to that Ephesians 5 to conclude. No. <laughs> I don't even know which one to go to. All right. Because I still have a lot. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. 
And that's where I will close. There are other things I still want to say, but time has failed me. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Simple scripture, but this is where we are going to conclude. A wise woman does what? Builds a home. What I've shown you today is how to build your home. How to make your home beautiful, strong, and solid. Those who follow these things, they are what? They are wise. A wise woman builds a home. But a foolish one, with her own hand, as she's fighting the husband and nagging and causing trouble, what is she doing to her home? She's tearing it down. A wise woman builds her own home, but a foolish woman, with her own hands, tears down her home. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts. May the Lord give us grace to apply his word into our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let us bow bow our heads and pray. I want us to begin to pray. Lord, give me grace. To build my home the way you want me to build it. Especially the ladies, please pray. Lord, I receive grace to submit to my husband, to submit to my own husband. I receive grace to have that inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, to submit to my husband, to honor my husband, to hold my husband in high esteem, in my speech, in my action, in my demeanor. I receive grace, my Lord, to respect my husband. I receive grace. To be able to control myself, even at difficult times. Many women have packed out of their homes in the heat of anger. only to realize later that they have made a wrong decision. They were not self-controlled. I received the grace for self-denial. That even when certain things are not convenient, I received grace to be strong, to build my home. You need to pray very well. This is about your life. It's not even about the church. These teachings are not cheap. They are not common anymore. Oil in the brooding moon, Jendelia, Brima, Mamma, 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 I receive grace for a peaceful home, a loving home. As we go through some of these teachings, you will see why some single people are still single. Because they have not even prepared themselves for what lies ahead. And God knows that they are not prepared. And he knows that if he pushes them into this, you know, institution of marriage, It's going to be a calamity. It's going to become a disaster. I receive grace, Lord.